Hello, everybody. My name is Sunday Adelaja. And uh, today I want to talk about the most corrupt government in Nigeria's history. We're, we've had 14 governments, and we're in the 15th government now in Nigeria's history. So we've had all kinds of governments, and this is the 15th government that we're having. So out of those 15 governments, which one of them is the most corrupt? Now, some people will expect me to talk about Abasha, but I've already spoken about Abasha. Abasha is the most corrupt head of state in Nigeria. But I'm not talking about end of state now. This one, the one that they talk about, eh, that the government, because the end of state himself might not be corrupt, but if he surrounds himself with corrupt people, it is still the government. It is still his government. Because well, the person I'm going to talk about right now is Good, good Luck Jonathan. And the reason I'm giving this, uh, I'm being careful, is that so my friends from the East, they are so sensitive. Even the South South people are not as sensitive about this topic as the my Igbo brothers. They will keep on attacking you and say, "Why are you attacking Jonathan?" It's not attack. -o. This one, in fact, the information that I'm going to give you is coming from England. Is going to it, the, there are statistics that have been found out by independent researchers, though not me. So the government of G Good Luck Jonathan stands out as the most Kleptocratic <laughs> government in Nigeria. They say, what is kleptocracy? Kleptocracy is a government of thieves by thieves and for thieves. <laughs> so, <laughs> kleptocracy is, is like Jonathan just ran a government of kleptocracy. It just it was it were just full of kleptocrats and thieves. Government of thieves by thieves and for thieves. They were stealing left, right, and center. And there is this Chatham House, right? You're, most of you people know of the Chatham House in, uh, in, in the UK. So this Chatham House says all the, the one third of the, all the money that has ever been stolen from Nigeria was stolen during the time of Jonathan. And we know that, uh, you know, oh, one third, one third of in six years alone, or five years or six years alone, there were over 200 billion. That is just the one that was stolen from oil sector alone. We are not talking about other sectors. From oil sector alone, 200 billion were stolen. 200 billion is almost about the size of the economy of Great Britain. The amount of money that was stolen just in a few years. I mean, it's not the economy. It's like the, uh, like, uh, the budget of Great Britain. So the kind of looting and kleptocracy that Nigeria went through under the administration of uh, Good Lord Jonathan, you can only, it, it's, left, it's just left your imagination. You can fantasize any amount and you will still not be able to get it. <laughs> I, I, they were so bad, I don't know what Jonathan was doing there. It was like the sheer man and everybody could do anything they wanted. The, ad, the administration was full of financial scandals from one to the other. In fact, there was a case of one, a woman, no. I mean, you women, you don't expect women to be so corrupt. But in Nigeria, women, no, no women, no, all of them are just corrupt, left, right, and center. This woman went to purchase bulletproof ass. What? $250 million bulletproof cars. $250 million cars. When, schools, when children cannot go to school, when people cannot eat three square meals, when there is no electricity, no water, nothing, no road, you are just to secure the bulletproof. Why are you buying bulletproof cars for, you know, billion, about 10 billion naira? Because, because you are afraid of death, because you are, you are stealing. Yeah, I think her name is uh, Stella Odua. It is one of the, he was a minister with Jonathan. But that's not the only one. That's just one little one. There is one scandal, another oil, and another financial scandal under Jonathan, where he had Jonathan's wash. It's called Malabu oil scandal. It's still going up to today. How much was stolen as a result of that Malabu oil scandal? Only God knows. So Jonathan is the most corrupt. Most it's not me. Like I said, the Chatham House in England is the one who brought out the statistic. One third of everything that's stolen from Nigeria, it was during Jonathan time. Then of course, we talk about corruption in Nigeria or during Jonathan's time without remembering the Ezeni. The Zanik, <laughs> she was the princess of corruption. She was the she was the pre theft princess of Nigeria. She was the former oil minister, the minister of oil. She was, I mean, elegant, always dressing. But everybody knows about a scandal. But she was accused of stealing. This is the one that was proven only. Oh, she was accused of stealing two billion dollars. 
But the amount that she diverted and misappropriated are much more than that. This is just for her alone, $2 billion. Now, the, but there, is, and there was another scandalous, uh, another scandal uh, uh, with, connected with money during the time of Jonathan. They stole, you can you imagine, they went to the Central Bank of Nigeria and took $8 billion away from there, carried it like this. <laughs> Eight billion dollars within four days. They were taking need. They got all the low level workers. They were going to just pack money out of federal, 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 federal central bank of the country. Eight billion. You know, eight billion is more than the budget of ten West African countries. Each one of them, not of them, reach eight billion. Ten countries who went to use and and get boys who are working in central bank just to open it. And they packed them for car. Eight billion in four days. Even Abasha didn't do that. Jonathan. Now, when we talk about it, you say he's the most democratic president. He is this. And this. He is the best president. Even if he himself didn't steal, if the wife has been accused of stealing, she has been convicted of stealing. So, what do you want to say? Let me tell you, that. you want me to go for that to prove to you that he is the most corrupt government in Nigerian history? Well, let's go to SS crude oil. When there is an account that Obasanjo, you know, started before he left, just to so that we have reserve. When you have crisis, we have reserve uh, for the gov for the states and everything. Without uh, this money has to be used with approval of national executive council and state governors. So, but during uh, Jonathan time, <laughs> SS crude oil, the, 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 the president, either is the one who gave them permission. Or, or who, who we don't know who gives them permission, the money will just be disappearing. <laughs> At least the one that was proven that disappeared from that was over two billion, two point two billion dollars just vanished by itself, no explanation. And a billion of that amount, and eh, the one that was traced though, that it was traced that a billion of that two point two billion that disappeared from SS crude oil went for recampaigning uh, to get uh, Jonathan reelected. One billion. Cash. And you know what? Lost the election. <laughs> and the money, nowhere to be found. They were just distributing money everywhere. And that's why Nigerians say that was when money, cash was flowing. That's the kind of government we want. You see, if the people who are stealing, they are not as bad as the people who are condoning them. The people who are stealing, they are not as bad as a nation that is celebrating and saying, yeah, this is the kind of government we want. They will share. You are all thieves together with them. It is that country that, that the corrupt mindset of our people. And that's why we must deal with value system. Because that's our people. Because we will say, I would rather have or Jonathan again, let him come back, so that he will steal and share. But we don't know that that's why we cannot give medicine to our children. That's why our children are dying of malaria. That's why we don't have roads. That's why we don't have hospitals. That's why we don't have schools. That's why your children can, you will never be lifted out of poverty. That's why we are all running from Nigeria. To, 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 to the Western world. You want me to continue that this is the most corrupt government in Nigerian history? <laughs> you want me to talk about uh, his security advisor? Where Jonathan took this security advisor from, only God knows. But his security advisor, the, I mean, the, the country was, <laughs> we were losing, we had lost about over 20 or 29 local governments also to Boko Haram. The country was so Boko Haram was just ravaging the country. They were killing our people, kidnapping our people, raping them. And the government decided to just give money so, to military so that they would go and fight the insurgents. This security advisor went, pocketed the money, and shared the rest to, with, with, with the cronies of the government. Two billion dollars was shared by the, you no, know, that was meant to fight uh, you know, Boko Haram was shared by, this, by, by, by these people. I mean, they just stole it, just disappeared. And now, some people have the conscience to say that it is persecution. Let them release the Dasuka. Dasuka. Let, the court has ordered them to release him. We don't have conscience at all. We don't have conscience. What he did doesn't matter. The court has said they should release him. You think that is the worst thing that has, that has been done in Nigeria? If Jonathan has been in another country, he wouldn't be working for you. 
Because let me tell you of another situation that happened in, during his administration. Within, between the year 2009 and 2012, in three years, Nigeria, there was $14 billion. In, in fact, the Sanusi Sanusi, the former, um, the former central bank governor, had charged that it was $20 billion that, was, that went missing from uh from the from nmpc but later on the ghost for forensic uh organizations and you know you know different organizations to do independent uh uh audit and as a result of the audit even though it was not 20 billion but they still discovered that at least 14 billion went missing under the nose of a sitting president who is alive that is almost the size of our whole budget that That is under Jonathan. But apart from that 20 billion of, let's say 14 billion that went missing, that is from NMPCO, which is oil. You know, apart from oil, Nigeria also has a gas company. I mean, we have gas, NLG, they call it. We also produce gas. And we are supposed to develop it so that it will help us with our electricity and everything. <laughs> the dividend, the money that was, of course, we are losing a lot of gas to flaring up, but it's, that it's some money are supposed to come in to develop the industry. The money that was coming in from NLG under Jonathan was 11 billion. All of them lost. <laughs> That's apart from 14 in oil. The 11 of gas also disappeared. This is the most corrupt government in the history of Nigeria. So when people are talking about Jonathan government, don't come here and be demonstrating your ignorance by defending him. Because, let me tell you another thing that, is, is that will just blow your mind. Jonathan went to China, I think. I think he went to China. And his government, they went to, I think he went twice or so to China to beg for loan. After he begged for loan finish, he took the money to come and build a railway and things like that. By the time they got to Nigeria like this with that money, 60% of it disappeared. <laughs> Son of men went. <laughs> Son of men went and pocketed the thing. They just shared the thing among themselves. Loan, loan. The work was not done, and Nigeria still had to pay back the loan with interest. And the, you know, so the, we talk. We talk a lot about the Dasuka, two billion dollars that was lost and things like that. But that was not the totality of, of the amount that was lost. If you look at all the money that was give, that was put given to the Ministry of Defense to defend the country and to fight Boko Haram, all the defense expenses that was lost here, it was three trillion naira was lost. That's almost the budget of the country. We couldn't find them. You think that's the, that's the only? The only that, that you think it's finished? No, my dear. They, there was two point two million dollars that was given for health. You know, because a lot of our children were dying. So we needed vaccination. <laughs> so they gave $2.2 to vaccinate to do vaccination for children. Uh -huh. You think any vaccination was done? <laughs> the people in that place just took care of themselves and the $2.2 billion disappeared. Let me tell you something else. This under Jonathan, that we had a crisis that was a huge one. They call it Ebola. And money, I think it was three or four or five billion uh, uh, naira to fight Ebola. They got fifty percent to fight Ebola. The rest of it, one point nine billion, to personal account again. And you say you had, we had president. God have mercy. God have mercy. This is the kind of president and the kind of government that Jonathan ran. There, there is this Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NEMASA, they call it. <laughs> From that agency alone, it was recorded that $13 billion went missing, almost the same amount as from NMPC. $13 billion. That is from one agency. What, what, it's a miracle that Nigeria still remains. You want me to talk to you about the Niger Delta Development Commission? That one is another. I'm going to, still going to do another video on that one. That one is another talk for another day. 
I mean, they are getting 13% of allocation of the whole Nigerian budget. And you cannot see anything to show for it. Now, woman pocket, then they, they go to all of them. Are just, in fact, Jonathan himself is from that Niger Delta area. And he couldn't make sure that the money that is, he himself is allocating to the place gets to the people. It's divided by the kings, by the militants, by, you know, the powerful governors, and all just elder skater meeting. <laughs> so I would not even, you know, I just feel like talking about this Alice Omaduke again. The Amazon herself. <laughs> the Amazon of looting under the Jonathan era. You know, I told you that she personally took $2 billion, don't you know, she was modest. For the amount that was looted under her watch is $6 billion. $6 billion just from the Ministry of Petroleum, uh, Ministry of Oil and all that. That is the total amount of money that was looted from, 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 that, from, the, from under our wash. Amazon herself. The Amazon herself. <laughs> Amazon of looting. I think I should talk about a miner. Because there is, there is this miner that eventually, I think that she's, she's been arrested right now, Abdul Rashid Miner. He was the head of pension fund. Oh, that pension one is another story. Because some people think that Miner was put there by Buhari. No, no, no. He's, he has been there since the time of uh, Jonathan. And that is when the most uh, corruption, the most fraud took place. He was accused of stealing to the tune of 195 billion naira. And when they took when they took him, he started confessing like parrot. He started singing. <laughs> so he started pointing fingers to all other people. And all the people he had pointed fingers to, they, by the time they calculated all the money that other people have, it came to about two or three trillion naira. That he himself knows that other people. He said his own is not too much. Oh. Ah, look at the other people. By the time you put everything together, it's coming to trillions of naira. Ooh, may God save us from such a government in the history of Nigeria. May we never have a catastrophic government like that of Jonathan again in our own history. That's why we, the citizens, must stand and resist and fight against this kind of manifestation. That we must talk about these things. We must expose these things so that we don't... Because if we don't learn from history, we will repeat history. Those people who don't learn from history, they repeat it. And if we don't want to repeat history, we must speak out. And that's what I'm doing. And I hope that I'm being an example to the next generation of Nigerians that they will not allow corrupt people, corrupt politicians to destroy their country and to steal their nation and their future from them. For the love of God, church and nation.